everyone. Twinkle is back. I'm back. Thank you if you are back. Thank you if it's your first time here. I appreciate having you here. I would say this is a part two. It wasn't planned, but seeing as my twinkle rot was quite extensive, more and worse than I thought it was going to be once I started cleaning her up. In the past days, I've considered her my little project orchid, and I'm going to see if I can actually save her because I normally think positively when it comes to orchids and their absolute remarkable characteristic and fight for survival. But when it comes to rot, when it comes to twinkles, when it comes to any orchid with a tight, tight grow habit like this, plus the climate, the temperature being cooler, especially in my situation, I do not have any controlled growing environment. I depend very much on what's going on weather-wise. So I was thinking what I'm going to do is see how this little orchid is going to progress based on the steps that I'm implementing after having done the rot cleanup. Now, in the past week, I have sprayed her every third day with hydrogen peroxide. She has been outside in the sunshine, even though we only have around 18 degrees Celsius, but she has been in a position of full sun. And if I have to move her from here to the next sunny spot, that is what I did. She has been exposed to a lot of airflow, as you can see, beautiful little blooms bouncing around in the breeze. The only thing now, the next step is to cut her spikes because in order to save this orchid, I am not going to have her consume energy on spikes that in themselves, they weren't that great a show this year because I had to deal with a lot of scale along the spikes while they were forming. So it is not that difficult for me to cut the spikes off. But in doing so, I am buying myself time. I am definitely giving this orchid time to recover and conserve her energy in doing so. I have to say that, yes, I did enjoy the blooms for about a week. And then I started the rot cleanup. And then I thought, what are you doing? The spikes have to come off. And in my defense, I was more focused in the video about rot cleanup than I was about the orchid and its long-term survival, I just wanted to show the rot cleanup process. While I'm doing this, I'm checking for scale because I've just seen a beastie in there. And even though I've just sprayed hydrogen peroxide, we are now going to go in with alcohol. But the main purpose of this video right now is to encourage you that if you have a situation like this with any orchid, you've enjoyed the blooms for a while, and you feel like you want to do something good for the orchid, then cut the spikes, conserve the energy, and especially when it comes to twinkles, once the spikes are gone, a twinkle will then go into reset mode and start active growth much, much quicker than another orchid would because these orchids actually bloom every time a new growth is formed and not based on spring, winter, or anything like that. So to initiate and trigger a new growth to start quicker, to manipulate the hormones while the orchid still has enough energy, it's best practice. So I have no issue with having cut the spikes, but I wanted to show that to you because from here on in, this orchid will show up sporadically with updates, even if it's just a quick vid. You see that scale? Yeah, now you see it. Now you don't. Gosh, that is so satisfying. Yeah, I've just sprayed the whole base of my orchid with alcohol. Alcohol will evaporate, so I'm not concerned about it being wet in there for too long. And back into sun and airflow, she goes. And this is where she lives. In the morning, when the temperatures are okay for her, she goes out onto my east-facing patio table because the glass heats up nicely. And then around lunchtime, when the west side is the warmest, I bring her up so that she can live up on the top with the Ancelia africanas. Now, she has to still not be very close to my other orchids 
because of what you just saw, the scale. So I'm cutting a fine, fine balance here, but she needs airflow, she needs sun. And now that the spikes are off, the next step is to wait and see when she gets into active growth. And then all the fantastic comments from the previous video will be taken into consideration to see what we're gonna do next with her. I am hopeful that under these circumstances, she will pull through until spring, until such a time when I can address her fully. Keeping fingers crossed, no guarantees in the orchid hobby. But this is the next step with regards to making sure that Oncidium Twinkle Red Fantasy will be around for another bloom cycle. And I'm taking you along for the ride. And thank you for being here for this ride. I really appreciate your time. Hope this video was helpful. And I want to wish you a very, very beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.